Hey guys, I'm glad you are tu tuning in and I'm glad to see you again. And I hope this message is going to encourage you. Because John chapter 8 verse 32 says, And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So I hope that you will be set free by listening to the word of God today. Uh, so let's lean in, expect the word of God to speak into your life, change you from the inside out so that we will all become more and more like Jesus. So last week, we learned that we are to move on. We are to make goals, go for our interests and pray for our country. But looking at the news and what people around us are saying every day, we still worry about COVID-19 and about our future. We just can't help when everybody is just talking about it every day. The news is talking about it every day. Especially when we read things like SPM and STPM are going to be postponed yet again. So in worrying times like this, uh, sometimes we can't help but wonder, is the world ending? If it's not ending, is this a sign that the world is ending soon? And when we think about things like that, we get even more worried. Uh, and we just hope that we get to hear from somebody or read something that will give us some amount of comfort and basically just to tell us everything is going to be okay. So in times like this, uh, you, might hear, you might hear a lot of things from many different sources actually. Uh, you might hear that someone had a spiritual vision about what this situation is for and when it will go away and what is going to happen in the near future. Or you might even hear somebody saying that they had a revelation. A revelation is a vision from God about the purpose of COVID-19 and when a cure will come. Or even a written letter from a reliable source describing the reason for COVID-19, or rather God's vision for COVID-19. Well, obviously you know better to not listen to those, uh, but here's the point. The reason why we're even entertaining all these thoughts is because we're really worried. And we want to understand what is happening and hopefully get some comfort and someone to tell us that things are going to be better. Well, Paul in the Bible has something to say about the end of the world, also described as the day of the Lord, also described as the second coming of Jesus. This is what 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12 says, Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Don't believe them. Even if they claim that they had a spiritual vision, a revelation, or a letter supposedly from us. Well, the us described here is Paul and people who do ministry with him. Jesus himself says in Matthew chapter 6, 31 to 34, says, Don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. So, what is the Bible trying to say? Well, simply just this. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. You see, a lot of times when we worry, we are really focused about one thing. Living longer on earth. Why do we worry about exams? What exams do for us? Well, it's so that we can get into a good university in the future. Why do you want to do that? Get into a good university, study a good course, so that we get a good job. Why do you want a good job? Well, so that we get a good paycheck and we be able to provide for a family in the future. So, why a good paycheck and good family? So that we enjoy life? Yes. And what next? we will next worry about our family. We will next worry about the health of our family members. Again, what for? So that the family lives longer when they have good health. And when a family have good health, quality of life increases, they enjoy life better. And after that, what are we thinking about? We're thinking about making sure we stay healthy. Again, why? So that we live longer on earth. You know where I'm going already. The whole point is, the reason why we worry, worry majority of the time is so that we can live longer on earth. And this is where Matthew 6, 31 to 34 says, Jesus says, 
don't worry about these things. What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? What are we going to drive? What are we going to hold as a phone? Uh, what kind of job do we work? Where do we work? Do we get to study local or abroad? Will we have a home of our own? All these things. Next thing that Jesus tells us is that these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. Why? Because unbelievers don't have a God who understands their needs and provide for them. And this is what believers have. A heavenly Father who already knows all our needs. So in other words, God provides for us and I have so many stories of my own just to tell you about how God has been providing for me and how He will continue to provide for you as well. The point I'm trying to make here, well, if I want to go into that, that's going to be a whole other message by itself. But I try, the point I'm trying to make here is really just that we don't have to worry because God takes care of for takes care of us and provides all our needs. Even needs that we don't know we're going to need in the future, He already knows and He has already planned for it. So, if we don't worry, then what do we do? Let's read on. Same, same book in the Bible, Matthew, same chapter 6, verse 33. So, if we don't worry, what do we do? This is what we do. Seek the kingdom, seek the kingdom of God above all all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need so don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries today's trouble is enough for today so again if we don't worry what do we do just in case it's not clear enough we seek god don't worry seek god because God will provide everything for us, everything that we need. And why do we not worry about tomorrow? Tomorrow, not just literally tomorrow, but it's also our future. Tomorrow here also refers to our future. If you are in secondary school today and your school calendar seems uncertain, if you are in Form 5, Form 6 this year and your exams seem to be a moving target, I would say and as the Bible says, don't worry about tomorrow. Uh, but of course, still prepare for your exams. Lah. <laughs> still prepare. Don't worry today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Why? Don't worry about the future. Why? Because we have enough troubles for today. If you think about it, you think about the problems that you have yourself in your own life, ask yourself, are there, do you have enough problems today? <laughs> if you do, you don't want to be worrying about tomorrow as well because you can't do anything about it. Neither can I do anything about my own tomorrow, my own future. So there's no point really in worrying about tomorrow because nothing will change. So what is the solution? Is it just about giving up? No, I'm not talking about giving up. I'm saying don't worry, but trust God, seek God about our tomorrow. What else can we do? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15 says this, With all these things in mind, brothers and sisters, stand firm and keep a strong grip on the teaching that we pass, to you, pass on to you both in person and by letter. The two things that we, that we can learn from this verse, and, and the first one is this, choose faith in Jesus. What do I mean? You see, when the... MCO was first announced in March, all the way back in March. Many people went to the supermarkets and then they started raiding the supermarkets. They stocked up tons of things, things like toilet paper, pasta, noodles, all sorts of food, canned food and other food stuff. Question is, and, and because they were worried that there won't be enough food, people were still worried even after they have paid at the cashier and brought all the food home. Question is, did it give them peace? Answer is no. People are still worried. People were still worried. People still worried today. Did they make them feel safer? Also no. People are still worried. People still don't feel safe because the virus is still out there and there's no cure. So what truly gave people peace, at least Christians, was that when they choose to put their faith in Jesus, that Jesus always speaks the truth that He always keeps His promises and that He is always in control 
over things on this earth and things beyond this earth. And often, people, but often people who don't put their faith in Jesus, but they put their faith in themselves, they would have to do things on their own using their own effort, using their own knowledge and intellect and skills, right? But what happened? Instead, they only managed to give themselves temporary peace, only for a short while. And often, they make things worse as well. So instead of choosing to put faith in ourselves, on our own knowledge, ability, skills, we need to put our faith in Jesus because He is the only one who is in complete control of things that we see here and the things that we don't see and the things of the past, present and future. He is in complete control all the time. So when we choose to put our faith in Jesus, our future, our school, our hopes and dreams. He is the only one who can actually do something that will bring change to this situation that we're in and any other situation that may come in the future. He has control over COVID-19. He has control over the economy or school or any situation and everything in the universe, literally. So, who will you put your faith in? Will you put your faith in limited human knowledge? Or will you put faith in the God who has control over all things? The choice is yours. The second thing, second point I want to share with you, also the last point, is know the word. Know the word. The easiest to explain this is through this story. There's this story about a father and two sons. Uh, they're both boys in primary school. So one night, the father called both boys and sat them down and talked to them. The older boy sat down, he paid full attention and listened to the, to the father very carefully. While the younger boy, on the other hand, he sat down for a short while, he got restless, he went to play his toys and then went to the kitchen to check out the mom, see what the mom is doing uh, and then went to the toilet and then came back. By the time the little boy came back, the father had already finished talking and everyone went to bed. The next day, the boys went to school, expecting their father to be there to pick them up after school uh, when the last bell rings. But when the last bell rang, the father was nowhere to be seen. The older brother said, let's wait at the assembly area. The younger brother had questions, but he didn't ask. He was like, mm, this is weird. This is not normal, but okay, simply because the older brother says so. So they waited 15 minutes. The younger brother was getting a little bit more worried. 15 minutes felt like a very long time to him. And he looked at the older brother. The older brother said, it's okay. He will come. We just need to wait here. Then, the younger brother waited. It's been 30 minutes now and rain had started to come down. The boys went into the shade. The younger boy looked at the brother again, the older brother again, and this time with watery eyes and asked, where is daddy? Is he coming? Does he still want us? Uh, why, why, don't we go with, or why don't we go home with your friend's daddy? They're, they're leaving right now. The older brother said, no, 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 no. We just need to wait here. Our daddy will come. It's been 45 minutes now and the rain got heavier. There are puddles all over the assembly area and the boys' shoes both are all wet from the splashes of water. It's humid and they are cold. By now, the younger brother is crying all out already, big tears rolling down his cheeks and thinking that the father had forgotten about them and they would have to sleep in school. The older brother said, he'll be here anytime now. But the younger brother is just, he just ignored the older brother. He's just so overwhelmed by his emotions. He's just so sad. He just kept on crying. And at the end of one hour, the father finally arrived. They see the father's car driving in and the father got out of the car with umbrella, bringing both boys into the car. 
On the way home, the younger brother, with tears still rolling down his cheeks, he asked the father, What took you so long? The father smiled and said, Well, I went to get your favourite food for lunch. That's why I was late. Then the younger brother was happier but surprised and then he asked, But, 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 why didn't you tell me? Then I don't have to be so worried. The father said, Son, I did. I wanted to tell both of you last night. But you were too busy playing your toys. You were too busy going around and checking out what's happening around the house. And by the time you came back, I had already finished telling what I had to say to both of you. So guys, girls, what am I trying to say? Well, if we don't know God's word, like how the boy, the younger boy doesn't know his father's words, we don't know what are his promises, his assurances, and his will, and his plan. The word gives us bearings, direction. God's truth sets us free. But when we know, only when we know it, we can claim it. If we don't know it, we don't know what is there to claim. So when we put our faith in Jesus, and when we know the word of God, we will be comforted. We will have peace. And we will have a wonderful hope for the future and strength to go through today. So everything we do while we're alive, all the worrying that we're doing about now and about the near future, there's only one purpose, is to stay alive on earth longer. But we can't stay alive forever with our own effort. That's why God gave us eternal life through His Son, Jesus. Only those who believe and put their faith in Jesus will have life after earth. That's the only way to continue living. People who put faith in themselves try to live longer with their own effort and will end up having to fear and worry many times over, over many things that they don't have control over. And that's a very long list. And right now, probably the first thing on the list is COVID-19. But for people who put their faith in Jesus, we will have confidence, hope and strength to go through the challenges, to go through the challenging days because we believe Jesus has full control over what is happening in the past, in the present, what's happening right now and those in the future. And they have, a, and they have surrendered all of their life to Jesus they have allowed Him to deal with it and just trust Him. So would you trust yourself or would you trust Jesus? Let's pray. Dear Lord, in days like this where even the end year, we're not too sure what's going to happen, even when we're not sure whether we're going to celebrate Christmas together with the rest of our friends or are we still going to be stuck at home? In days where we're not sure whether our exams are going to be postponed again or even for the matter where what's going to happen in early next year, teach us and help us to put our faith in you, the only one who has control over everything. As much as we hate to admit that we don't have control, the fact is only you have control over everything. And also help us to come to you and know your word so that we will know your plans for us, so that we will receive assurances and comfort and strength for you to go through the challenges that we have today and that we will have bright hope for tomorrow. So help us to just do two things, put our faith in you and to know your word so that we know how to move forward. We pray all this in Jesus' name. And everybody over the screen says, Amen.